Psalm 61. To the chief musician upon Nigida, and that is a string instrument, a Psalm of David. Again, we're looking into future prophecy. David was a prophet. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. Then God listened to me. David, a man after God's own heart, is telling God, listen to me. I go a step further, and, and I've seen it in the Bible. You know, if you rightly divide the scriptures, quote the scriptures to God. Say, God, this is what your Bible says. The Bible says, ask. Seek not. David said constantly, hear my prayer, Lord. Bible says you ask not, you receive not because you ask not. People are so afraid. That's our direct communication with God. Not for ourselves, but for everybody around us, saved or lost. We know God hears, but sometimes, what do we think? God, you're not listening. That's human. For the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. That's the Jewish people all over the world today. David says, wherever you bring me, Lord, I'm going to cry unto you. When my heart is overwhelmed, I'm overburdened, I've got so many troubles, i got so many problems. Israel in the time of Jacob's trouble. David's like, when I just can't, I've had enough. I'm burdened. And Jesus says, cast your burdens upon me. Take my yoke. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And Paul says that that rock is Jesus. Look, at David, look what David said. That rock that's higher than me. I'm nothing. I'm way down here and that rock's up there. Up where? In heaven. In heaven. For thou hast been a shelter for me. Protection. From weather. From the enemy. From the environment. Whatever. You know... Like a hotel or motel. You're driving all night. You know what? You're just tired. You pull in off the highway. You find yourself a little inn, a little hotel. And you go into a shelter. You get rest. Get yourself something to eat. You get yourself nourished. And you go back on the road, awake, ready to go. That's what David said. <clears throat> a strong tower, a castle from the enemy. A tower. You get up. You can look. You see where they are. I will abide, stay, move, not move, in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert as a covering, a private, conceal of thy wings. Dela. What did I say? That's a musical rest, tribulation. Jesus said, pray that your flight not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. We read in Revelation that the wings of an eagle were given to that woman, nation of Israel. Jesus said, oh, as a hen with her, with her broad, uh, I have called you under my wings and you wouldn't have come. David said, I'll go. For thou, O God, has heard my vows. But Lord, hear my prayers. <laughs> You see, David believes God hears him, but he, I know how David is. Maybe you haven't had problems and troubles in your life. You're like, Lord, where's the answer to prayer? Everybody says, patience, patience in the Lord's time. Well, let's see how you do when you really want something and need something, okay? Let's see how you can practice what you preach. People are so great to give their words of advice. Let's see what happens when you do it. Because the great David, a man after the Lord's heart, said, God, you're not listening. Hello, God. And David wasn't even a Christian. David didn't have the, the, the mercies and the grace and, the, and what we know as Christian. Thou, God, has given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. When I fear the Lord, they get inherited. 
Now watch verse 6, verse 7, and verse 8. Watch it. I feel sorry people don't read the Bible. I feel sorry because you're missing so much. I had a guy tell me about one book in the Bible. Oh, I haven't read that in years. Dumb. <laughs> and people say, you know, Stiley, you're, you're so bad. You know, you you conjure up, you know. I could have said something. I didn't. I said it to the Lord. I was like, really? This guy here telling me he hasn't read the Bible. <laughs> Dumb. Let's see what the Old Testament and the New Testament says. From Genesis to Revelation. Watch David. That will prolong the king's life. Now, is that a capital K or a small K? That's a small K. That's David. That's not Jesus. That's David. And God gives David many years. David gets to an age, man, I'm so freezing, I'm cold. I, I need I need electric blanket. And they gave him a woman. They didn't have electric blanket. I don't know why they didn't give him Bathsheba. Maybe she was old and cold, too, but. They got a woman to lay with David, not for sexual intercourse, but just to keep him warm. How's that for, for getting married? The guy had all these wives, and they went and saw a woman to keep him warm. There was no relations. I shall not live with him. Oh, sorry. I'm only going that direction. That will prolong the king's life. He said there was no sexual intercourse. So. Don't go say fornication. There was no fornication. There was no adultery. There was no sex as well. But she lived with David. That will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. That's David. And David lived to gener generate many generations. You say, well, who cares? Okay, let's read life. Let's read on. Let's read on. Let's read the whole Bible. He shall abide before God. We'll stop right there for a moment. Now tell me when David abide before God. He was at the tabernacle. Good answer. He, David, shall abide before God forever. Is David living at the tabernacle before God right now? There is no tabernacle. There is no temple. G David never saw the temple. He saw a place of curtain. He said, I looked out my window, and I see that God dwells amongst curtains. So what's the problem? When will David be able to dwell before God forever? When he's in Jerusalem, the temple's there, and Jesus Christ is seated on the seat of the throne of David, and David is the prince, according to Ezekiel. So when he says, I'll be, I shall abide before God, throw the Jehovah Witnesses off into hell. That God is Jesus. And that Jesus is going to be seated on the throne of David. So says the scriptures, so says Paul. And the, the test, I mean, the, the new, the Old Testament, the writings of the prophet, I believe it's Ezekiel, says that David the prince is going to serve before the prince the branch. David is saying, I'm going to be resurrected one day. I'm going to live forever. There it is. And I'm going to stand before God. And who is that God? Jesus Christ. There it is. There it is. The prolonging the king's life, David's life, verse 6, is a resurrection in the millennium. And when the millennium's done, the devil's going to be released for a very short season. And he's dead. He's going off in the lake of hell. Heaven and earth has gone away. The, the, the great white throne judgment. The books are open. That's done. I saw a new heaven. A new earth. Jews. The new heavens. I believe Gentiles. And maybe David will sit as the prince or a king of the nation of Israel and a new earth. While Jesus Christ sits king and the son of God in New Jerusalem. With all the gates open are given to the names of the apostles and the, the twelve tribes of Israel. And David will walk up and walk around living forever. Have you ever heard the resurrection of David? Have you ever heard the resurrection of uh, Elijah? The resurrection of uh, Moses? 
the resurrection of Enoch, the resurrection, well, res, Enoch never died, resurrection of Noah. How about the resurrection of Adam? They're all coming back to life. When Jesus died, he cried out. He said, the graves were open in Jerusalem. They're walking around. Now, some believe that David wasn't one of them because Peter said, David's sepulchre is still here, but I, I don't know. David went to Abraham's bosom. He's not sitting down in that abyss today. It's Absalom went to his own place, not David. So here's David saying, I'm going to be resurrected. I'm going to be for God. Jesus. There it is. Oh, prepare mercy and truth. God, Jesus, which may preserve him. David. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever. David, not here. He will be here later. And the millennium is this joy and grace and, and wonderfulness and the curse is removed except the serpent and this, this glorifying God and all the feast days and the Gentiles are grabbing the Jews and come, let us go with you because the name of the Lord is on upon you. And Israel will be given that brand new heart. That I may daily perform my vow. So again, we see a tribulation. We see a millennial passage. And David does, probably doesn't even know what he's saying. To so David, you know, life is oh, forever. Can you imagine when David's just sitting there, you know, it's like Psalm is now king. He's like, and I've heard, I've heard some old people say that. I think the Lord forgot about me. I am so old. Man, what happened? all my friends are dead. All my family's dead. Lord, you forgot me. I suppose the Queen Elizabeth is like that. That woman has passed over all the generations of, 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 of the royalty of that family. And she's still that reigning, well, not reigning, but she's still that monarch. Or she never sat there and said, Lord, looking around like... Yeah. Everybody I know has died. So, here we are. The great God that protects us, David said. And then he goes into, I'm going to be with God forever. And that God is Jesus. And that protection is in Jesus. That ark of Noah was protection of Noah and his family. And that ark is a type of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. 